Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back! <laughs> Beast! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! Beast! <laughs> I'm YouTube famous now! Available in 2021, the album, live at Hogwarts. <laughs> Dad, AF, <clears throat> Rock on, cold dust, woman! Boost! How are you guys doing today? Oh my god, I have been up since 7 o'clock this morning, you guys. I have been going all day. You should feel bad for me. You guys are like, well, we get up at 7 in the morning every day. We get up at 6 and we're on the road at 7 every morning. I have literally been going, 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 going. And it is currently 5.22 p.m. and I am finally sitting down to film my much-awaited, no, <laughs> my lazy, boring drama video uh, because I finally watched the Frenemies podcast with Trisha Paytas and uh, Ethan Klein from H3H3. H3. It's their newest podcast that they put out and uh, they talk about all kinds of stuff in there. So I wanted to kind of address a couple of the things that Trisha Paytas talked in there. And the reason I went to go watch this in the first place uh, was for two reasons, actually. I got a lot of DMs that she was talking in there about how Jeffree Star unfollowed her. Someone talked about that in just a second. But then people were talking about how um, th there was like this argument or this fight at the end of the podcast. And people were like, oh, it's really hard to watch. No, it's absolutely 100% cringe. And it is so uncomfortable to watch. Like, I'm almost surprised that Ethan Klein decided to, uh, I mean, I don't know how he would end the, the podcast otherwise because Trisha Paytas literally just walks off set. It is so uncomfortable to watch. And the comments in the comment section of the video are like, they're letting Trisha have it. Like, I was really surprised. I thought I would get to the comment sections and it would kind of be 50-50, but it's really not. People are like really, really unhappy with Trisha. Uh, they're just, they're saying all this kind of stuff about her. So I wanted to get in it and give my two cents about all of this and her being upset that Jeffree Star unfollowed her, which she says, you know, she isn't and she is and she isn't, all this kind of stuff. But anyway, before I do, let me put on some lip gloss because I have... <laughs> I have lots to say today about all of this. Uh, okay, so first of all, I need to give a little birthday shout out to Katie. Happy birthday, Katie. Katie's birthday is tomorrow, but you know, we're not promised tomorrow. So, uh, you know, we have to say happy birthday when we say happy birthday. So happy birthday, Katie. I hope you have the most amazing birthday in the entire world. Um, and anybody else that has a birthday today or tomorrow. So anyway, all right, let's get into this video. Uh, okay, I don't really even know where to start. So I did a video um, like a week ago or so, and I doing kind of like, uh, I talked about some things that Trisha Payton, I am so, like you guys, I, this, this podcast video, well, first of all, it's kind of called a podcast because they list it as a podcast. You know, you can listen to it as a podcast, but it's really a video of them. I mean, it's very much like watching a talk show because it's just the two of them on set. Um, so anyway, which I think watching it makes it almost even more uncomfortable at the end. And I, I'm going to get to that part in just a second. Um, I didn't have any idea what to expect going into this. I listened to it at two times speed until I got to certain parts where Trisha was talking so fast that I had to slow it down. Um, the first major part that she gets to, she, which, okay, first of all, she's talking about James Charles at one point, and he says that he's just not going to let it go. Okay, oh wait, let's go back. I did a video like a week ago or something like that where Trisha Paytas was saying all this stuff about James Charles, and you guys remember that video that I did, and I said in there that I didn't think that Ethan Klein was funny, but that I would go and watch some more videos of his and whatever. Ethan Klein says funny stuff every once in a while, but his humor, um, okay, so his humor is very, very dark and kind of sarcastic, and I don't find that to be super funny. I don't enjoy that. That's just my, my personal enjoyment of humor. I don't find that kind of like, let's shade everybody in the room and be really cruel. Like, I don't find that to be super funny. I will say this, okay? For now having listened to two of their podcast, their over hour podcasts, as much crap as drama channels get for talking about people, 
Ethan Klein speaks horribly about people in the YouTube community. I mean, horribly. It, it's, I mean, he calls them names. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. And it was interesting because people are like, he's so funny. I, he said one thing that I was kind of like, I mean, it was just kind of so much. And it was when they were talking about Jaclyn Hill and, and, and Trisha made a comment about her, her lipsticks. And he goes, oh yeah, didn't they have like rot in them or something? I just was like, dude, like what? Like, I mean, it's so out there and he's calling her names. And so anyway, they start talking and he says um, that he's not going to let go of the James Charles thing, right? Well, don't let go of it if you don't want to. You know, the last time I said something about like, maybe you ought to let it go, right? And people were like, well, he shouldn't let it go. If he lets it go, then James Charles will continue to steal other people's designs. Y'all, James Charles is going to continue to steal other people's designs, okay? He's going to continue to see makeup looks and things that he wants to make his own and he'll spin it and be like, oh yeah, it's mine. He's been doing this since the beginning of his career, okay? Even Klein coming for him is not going to stop James Charles from taking somebody else's idea and making his own. He's been doing it from the very, very beginning, okay? And he always has these great ideas. And I can even remember one time talking to James Charles on the phone and um, I was like, not that we talked all the time because we didn't, but and this is why I don't talk to these people anymore, okay? Because I want to be over here and be able to have my opinions. But I literally said something to him like, you know what you should do? And like a, like a sentence or two later, he was like, oh my God, you know what I should do? And it was literally what I had just said. And I was like, I just said that. And I said that, to, I go, James, I just said that. And he goes, oh, did you? And I was like, yeah, I literally just told you that's what you should do. And he was like, oh yeah, but I've been kind of been thinking about that anyway. And I was like, oh, okay, right? Anyway, I, I will tell you, that is not the first person that did that to me, okay? Uh, Shane Dawson actually did that to me, too. Um, I had talked to Shane Dawson about a series idea that um, I thought that he should pursue back in the day. And, um, and, and actually, it, it, I thought it would have been an interesting um, documentary series to do. I don't know why we needed to follow Jeffree Star around 15 times. Who'd care, right? But I said to him, you know, like, you want to go after and talk about all of these, like, psychopaths on YouTube and stuff like that. Well, why don't you talk about it from another point of view? Why don't you talk about YouTubers that have had stalkers? Tana Mojo supposedly has had stalkers. And then why don't you talk about the whole story of Christina Grimmie? Because nobody talks about that anymore. And it's such a sad and tragic story, you know? Um, I said, why don't you talk about that? And he goes... That's so weird that you said that because I was, I actually have the text messages too, okay? Um, he goes, that is so weird because that was actually what I was thinking about doing and that was going to be my next series. Well, two more Jeffree Star series came out and that one never did. So I don't know what, what that was about, but I don't, he probably will never make that documentary series now. So do I think that Ethan Klein continuing to call James Charles out is going to stop James Charles in the future? No. If he wants to continue to beat this dead horse, he can do it all day long. But it's like at some point, like I said this, and I, I think people don't really understand what I meant by this. That I had talked to Kelly Catrone in the past, who wrote the book, uh, If You Have to Cry, Go Outside. It's a fantastic book. And she was on the television show, Kel on Earth. She had her own reality show. She runs People's Revolution, which is the largest fashion PR company in the world. And I asked her, I said, you know, like, when people steal your ideas, what do you do? And she was like, I just, and she laughed. And she was like, I just let them have it. Because they are obviously so uncreative that they need to steal my ideas. But I can come up with a thousand more ideas. And that was what I was saying, right? Yes, it's horrible that James Charles allegedly took Ethan Klein's uh, 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 idea for his merch that his wife had designed. I think it's horrible. I do. I, I go back to my first video and I stand behind that. But at this point, it's literally been weeks. It's like, okay, at, at what point is it doing you more harm than good? Maybe it's something that you just need to let go so that you, he's not renting space in your head because he's kind of he he always brings up James Charles and all these things. Well, Trisha said something to the effect that. He's very condescending. And then Ethan said, yeah, even when we were talking about him before, um, you said you were saying nice things about him. <sighs> what? Because he was like, I said, I said bad things about him and you said some nice things about him. What? I don't know what conversation they're talking about behind the scenes, but on film, Trisha Paytas shredded James Charles. She absolutely shredded him. Okay. Unless I watched some video that nobody else watched. I don't know. But she said in there that he was, I think she referred to him as evil and that people behind the scenes said he was a horrible person. And I mean, she said all of this really negative stuff about James Charles, which at the time I kind of was like, why is she gunning for all of these beauty influencers and talking about all of these beauty people? 
So then she had talked about James Charles. Well, then she came out and she talked about Jaclyn Hill. Well, in this video, she goes in and she talks about Jaclyn Hill again. And it's like, girl, like, what are you doing? Are you trying to get a rise out of these people? Because in all honesty, they're probably not going to come for you. Now, Jaclyn Hill did post some things on Twitter, but she's not going to come out directly and say anything to Trisha Paytas. But you know what's interesting is she did say in her video, uh, that, or, uh, Jaclyn Hill made the video and she did the assumptions video and she talked about how she met Jordan and all this kind of stuff. Trisha Paytas has some real issue with Jordan, uh, Jaclyn Hill's a boyfriend. I'm not really sure what it is. First of all, she insinuated, well, she didn't insinuate. She said that Jaclyn Hill still hung up on John Hill. She said that Jaclyn cheated on John when they were together. Trisha said she slept with John Hill. This is all the newest uh, podcast. You, you can listen to it. And all this kind of stuff. And then she went on and she's like, Jordan's not good looking. I don't think I have bad tastes in men. And I think Jordan's very good looking. I really do. I don't think Jordan and John Hill are the same look. I think John Hill is attractive too. And he follows me on Instagram. I don't know why. <laughs> his wife, his ex-wife does it, but he follows me. Um... But I did send him a message one time way back in the day, and I said, hey, you don't know who I am, but I'm sober, and, you know, like, I'm a drama channel, and if you ever need somebody to talk to, I'm here, whatever. And I was not trying to get any tea. I truly was just reaching out as a person in recovery, you know, because he had mentioned that he was in recovery, too. So, anyway, um, but he never responded to that, so I don't know. But, anyway, um... This is like me. Let me tell you all the private conversation. This is why I don't want to talk to these people anymore. That was way back in the day. I don't want nobody's PR. I can listen. I can buy my own PR right here. Okay. I don't need nobody's PR. And I don't want to talk to any of these fools behind the scenes. And don't call anybody a fool, my mother said. But anyway, then she goes in and she's talking about his cooking channel, More Seasoning, and how it's like, it's just like this stupid channel, and, he, and she, he says, he looks it up, and he's like, oh, his last video got 20,000 views, and she's like, he's not getting very many views, he doesn't have very good clout. And I'm like, girl, that's all you care about. All your relationships are just built on clout. And she's like, if that's what you care about are the views. Well, yeah, Trisha, we know that's what you care about, Right. For example, she says she doesn't care about all the money and all this kind of stuff, right? But at the end of it, when they get in this argument, she talks to him about wiring her her money. And that's the second time that she's mentioned how much she should get paid in this podcast. I mean, it gets ugly, you guys, at the end of this. So anyway, she goes in on Jaclyn Hill and she says all this stuff about how she cheated on John when Jaclyn just came out in an assumptions video and said that was absolutely not true and that John and Jordan were not best friends. Trisha then goes in and she says that Jordan was Trisha's best or Tr Jordan was John's best friend that filmed his uh, videos for him, basically saying that Jaclyn Hill is a liar. She called Jaclyn Hill a liar is what she did. And it's interesting when you're watching this because you can tell throughout the podcast that Trisha Paytas still keeps up with all of the drama on YouTube. She must be watching drama videos because when well, she even referenced a couple different, she was like, there was a drama video made about this or drama video made about that and whatever. And he made some joke about T channels or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, and she watches every single one of them that comes out. So what's the joke about that? I guess, you know, um, something that was said in the last podcast Cat. Oh, oh, that she that Jeffrey Star unfollowed her, and she said she saw it in a drama video that she didn't even know that it had happened, which I don't know if that's true or not. So she comes out and she says all this stuff about Jacqueline Hill, and I'm like, okay. So in the last podcast, her podcast, she said all kinds of stuff about Jacqueline Hill, right? Then it, she comes out and about and she said it again about Jacqueline Hill saying that she's going to sue her and all this kind of stuff. Then she comes out for James Charles before that and says that he's condescending. And then she says all this stuff about Jaclyn Hill. And then they go in and they start talking about Jeffrey Starr. Well, the Patrick Starr, first of all, is how this whole thing starts. And Patrick Starr, and I don't know how he dis disrespected Michael Keaton from Beetlejuice. And she goes into this whole rant about Beetlejuice and all this kind of... Girl, didn't Beetlejuice come out when I was in junior high? You're not the first one to discover it, okay? I, I love when people... They get real obsessed with something that's been around forever and then they want to claim it as their own like they're the only person that knows about it. Yes, I love Beetlejuice too. I love Wynonna Ryder, okay? And I love everything about all those movies. Okay? Or I love everything about that movie. I've seen it a million times. Yes, and Michael Keaton is great as Beetlejuice in the movie, okay? And what's her face from Schitt's Creek that I can't even think her name? She was in that too and she was fantastic. But that movie came out 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Prop when did it come out? I need to look up this and see. But she's going on and on and on, wanting to educate a bunch of people about all this stuff. And I'm just like, girl, the movie came out forever ago. Okay, I can't even spell it. Beetlejuice. Um, 
Here, in 1988, girl, I was a junior in high school. Were you even alive? <laughs> I ain't claiming to own it, okay? I don't love the movie that well. I don't, you know, but it's okay. So anyway, um, what, what was I trying to say? What's her name? Catherine O'Hara. Is that her name from Schitt's Creek? I love her. But anyway, so she goes into this whole thing, and then she gets in this Jeffrey a star thing about how Jeffrey Star unfollowed her, okay? Now, do you remember this summer when um, the friend behind the scenes that was filming him and all this kind of stuff? That's who she says it is. But Tab David was the one that she supposedly had the back and forth DMs with, and she says in there, Jeffree Star unfollowed her and it hurt her feelings or something like, she said something like that. And then he was like, oh, really? And he was like, you know, and she, he only follows 95 people and they go into this whole thing about, girl, at least she didn't get blocked. Jeffree Star blocks everybody. That's next, Trisha, okay? He'll be like, block, can't be bothered with her. But apparently he, he unfollowed her and muted her. I don't know what he doesn't want to hear of hers or see of hers. But anyway, I can't even imagine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, maybe he goes to the grocery Maybe Jeffree Star's up in the grocery store and he's afraid people are going to see Trisha Paytas as that bootylicious with toilet paper. And I don't know. Okay, maybe that's why he unfollowed you. That could be the reason. Maybe he just, that's not his thing. I don't know. But anyway, she goes on and she talks about it and then he... Ethan says something to her about their relationship, but weren't you good friends? And she's like, yeah, but he knows I was kind of upset about how the fact, the fact that he didn't stand up for Jeff, for Shane back. No, that's news to us, girl. You didn't say that. You were defending Shane and Jeffrey, okay? And then he even said that you and Jeffrey were friends when everybody came out and said you weren't friends because these allegations about this Vegas trip came out that when Trisha left the room or whatever, that Jeffrey was saying stuff about her weight and her skin and all this kind of stuff. And But Jeffrey Star, hold on a second, because now she's calling Jeffrey Star a liar. Because do you remember in the Instagram stories, Jeffrey Star came out and he said he doesn't talk about people behind his back. He doesn't talk behind, about his friends behind their back, right? So does he talk about friends behind his back or does he not talk about friends behind his back? Because he said, I know that you all want me to think or you all want to think that we all talk behind our backs, but I don't do that. And I'm not going to be the drama of 2020. It was in that one, remember? Well, now Trisha Paytas is saying that he did talk behind her back, so Trisha Paytas must believe that. And they had some issue about that, right? So she's calling Jacqueline Hill a liar. She's calling James Charles a bad person, a horrible person. And she's calling Jeffree Star a liar, too. She's calling everybody liars left and right, right? Then it gets into this thing with Ethan Klein. And it was interesting because I watched it and then I watched it back. Because not the whole podcast. My Lord, it's an hour and 27 minutes. Y'all want me to have a heart attack on the... I can't do that. No, it's too much. So I'm sitting there and there, there was a moment where like you could kind of see her getting fired up. And y'all know I'm not a Trisha Paytas fan today. I'm just not. Okay. But the part of me that back in the day was kind of... Like, I could see her getting fired up. And when you've watched Trisha for a long time, it's like... I could kind of see her really getting hurt inside. And the thing is, is that when Trisha gets hurt, she lashes out. And if you've watched her long enough, you know that. And I'm not saying that's okay. That's not okay, right? And at the end of it, Ethan even tries to like have this real conversation with her. He takes total ownership over what he said. And he's like, Trisha, I'm really sorry, blah, 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 whatever. And she's like, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm walk I am I don't want any part of this. And he goes, well, I can tell that you're really upset. And she's like, no, here she is on this podcast. And then she comes out and says that Moses will probably break up with her her boyfriend Moses and he says why and she's like because I don't like his family and I don't like hanging out with you and I'm like oh, okay here we go vlog squad all over again okay the reason it didn't work with Jason Nash is because the vlog squad and David Dobrik don't like Trisha Paytas it's always that story isn't it it's always that story and here I am watching this and I'm kind of feeling sorry for her at first I'm kind of like she, she gets herself so revved up because he made some comments. Like, his humor is harsh, you guys. It really is. And, I mean, these two do not need to be sitting on any kind of podcast together. This was inevitable that this was going to happen sooner or later. Because he starts coming for her about this OnlyFans. And then he starts coming for her about not having, she shouldn't be having kids or whatever. And talking about a, getting a house together with her, you know, with Moses and all that. It's just... It's a lot, and you can see it when you're watching it. This is where you can see it on video, but you wouldn't if you were listening to it at a podcast. She's getting, like, revved up, right? And she even says at the end, and I know people are not going to agree with me on this because people in the comment sections were like, oh, Trisha this and Trisha that, and she's a horrible person and whatever. But it's like, they were both pushing each other's buttons. Like, they are both responsible for what happened on that podcast, both of them, okay? And she even says at the end, 
people want to get like people want me to uh, they get mad when I like say stuff and whatever but and she's like but they push me and they push my buttons or basically is what she said right and I'm like watching it and I'm kind of like yeah I just saw that happen like I literally just saw Ethan Klein go like this and push and push and push and push and push and push and then when she couldn't have stand it anymore she snaps and what she does is she comes out and he was right. She weaponizes things that he told her. And she did do that in the bit, in the podcast. She comes out and she throws the meanest, harshest thing at you that she can throw at you because she wants you to feel as bad as she does, right? Don't we all know people like that? Haven't we felt like that before? I know I have. I don't want to be that person today. I don't want somebody to hurt the way that I hurt. And Ethan Klein is sitting there at the end of the conversation. And, and you know, he goes, I thought we were joking with each other. I think I thought we were shading each other. And honestly, from Ethan's point of view, when you're watching it, he, I really do think that he thought that they were joking and shading with each other, except for the things that he was saying were not funny to Trisha. Because I don't know if he doesn't know Trisha well enough or if he hasn't watched her canon of 9 million videos that she's put out over the last 10 or 11 years. But there are certain topics that Trisha really, like, she does get hurt about. Trisha throws her whole life out there for everybody, and this is the thing. Trisha Paytas is okay with being the joke if she makes herself the joke. But if somebody else makes her the joke, she's not okay with that at all, right? And, you know, it was really sad to watch because you can literally see this, like, meltdown occur with her. And I, I've seen that on video with her just a couple of times. And she really thought, I think, that they were friends. And then, but the sad thing is, is like, you know, do I think they'll be on another podcast? Like, I was watching the end of it, and I was like, do I really think this is the end? First of all, anybody that says that this is for the podcast, that is, you have not watched enough Trisha Paytas videos. I mean, you could literally see that she was really upset. She, she, he could, sh 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 he could see that she was really upset, because he's like, you are really angry at me. And she goes, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. And she's like, I'm ready to go. And she walks off the set and she says, Moses, are you coming with me? And he goes, well, he drove his own car. And he goes, she goes, no, he drove my car is what she says. I'm like, I'm she's about to go off. There's going to be, I can't believe she hasn't put up a video about, has she? I should look and see. I, I am really, really surprised. When did that come out? Two days ago? Has she put up a video about it? I need to look. Hold on a second. Uh, Trisha Paytas. I can't believe that she hasn't said anything about this because this is something that she usually goes off about. No, um, Burger King failed me. Selena, over, oh, maybe over it? Maybe that's the one? Oh, because she's in the outfit that she had on that thing. Um, I bet that is the one. I bet that is it. Hold on a second. Let's see what this is about. She doesn't have any description box. Well, I mean, yeah, it's the same costume. So she must be, she must have gone off about it and I'll have to watch that video and then I'll do some kind of follow-up if she did. Um, but just for your uh, for your viewing interest, let me go in here and just read you guys some of the comments. The really sad thing about it is, though, that Ethan was really trying to, like, have a real conversation at the end. And, you know, this is the thing. She's 32. She says in there, I'm 32, right? She's 32 years old. I don't know how, Ethan, how old Ethan Klein is, 40, something like that, you know? Late 30s, 40, I don't know. And she's, like, sitting there trying to have, he's trying to have a conversation with her and say, listen, I'm sorry, like, let me take responsibility for it. And she is unwilling to have the conversation. And he even makes a comment at some point. He says, I, now I know why all your relationships fail. And it's like, I mean, that was not, that was the nail in the coffin for that podcast. He didn't need to say that because that was kind of like then she was really done, right? But it's the truth. It's like there is no sitting down and having a rational conversation with her. None whatsoever. And you can see it on here, you know? He's trying to have a real, you know, like adult conversation with her. And there is, there's no adult conversation to be had. She has checked out and she has done. So let me um, pull up. Here it is right here. Trish, and he titled it, Trisha and Ethan uh, have a huge fight and she storms out in front of me. It's, so here are the comments. Let me go into the, the top comments. Hold on just a second. Let me make sure I'm pulling this top comments up first. Uh, someone said, why is the most engaged... Okay, wait. Why is this the most engaging and ent entertaining podcast I've heard in ages? The mix of your opposite personality is genius. It is until it isn't. I mean, it, okay, it kind of didn't work this time. There's 196 replies. Let's see what people are saying on this. And Trish going so hard on people. I love it. So genius. Okay, and then it goes, uh, watch the full podcast. All you commenters that say this was great. Didn't watch the whole thing and see how Trisha acts. She's vile. I'm ashamed of all of you for supporting her after she attacked. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, next one. I mean, he's not wrong that it's more commitment to have a kid than a house. I do think Trisha 
Uh, okay, it goes on and on. The worst part about this is that Ethan is genuinely trying to resolve things and apologize at the end, and Trisha just keeps laying it on. Let's see what the eight replies are. Why did he ask her who won World War II? He was literally just trying to, like, deflect the conversation, and it was not funny what he did, and I don't know. Um, someone said, I actually did think it was funny. He's such a prick for it, but I genuinely laughed when I saw how mad she looked. Um... Okay. Oh, shit. I keep on getting out of the things. Trisha, I hate cancel culture. Trisha, Trisha you're ne next, next to be canceled. This is very interesting. And she always goes on about how she can't, hates cancel culture, cancel culture this, cancel culture that. And then she literally looks at him and she says, okay, well, you're next to be canceled. <laughs> she's questioning him about his views. He's like, my views are better than they've ever been. And she's like, well, what about your chance? She's like, you're next to be canceled. Um, Trisha telling Ethan that his life is sad and depressing when she literally just described wanting to have kids and get married like Ethan is. She, she does. She says, your life is sad and pathetic, and, and you, I can see it in you. You have this sadness in you. But then the whole life that she describes that she wants about how she doesn't even care about YouTube and any of this kind of stuff anymore, and she just wants to have six kids, and it's exactly, I mean, like, it, it's very confusing. I love how Trisha is a definition of a hypocrite. She's like, this person should be canceled for racist remarks. I mean, I've said racist things, but they did too, so cancel them. Um, someone said, imagine insulting someone because they have been married for 12 years. She does. She comes for him and she says something about, like, you've been with the same person for 12 years. And he says, and she acts like she's got tea on that or something. And she's, because she's like, well, I could say something, but, and he's like, why would I, I don't want to be with anybody else. And she was like, she makes some comment about that. Um... Someone said, Trisha, I'm not money hungry. Trisha proceeds to talk about her cut of the profits in every podcast so far. Um, someone said, I'm trying to figure out what actually set her off. Trisha acted like it was Ethan calling her crazy, but I think it really started with him talking about how weird it was. Okay, it goes into the whole OnlyFans thing. Um, did anyone else feel awkward that they shouldn't be watching their argument towards the end? Yes, I did. It was completely cringe. It was totally, <coughs> totally cringe. I didn't... I really didn't understand why he included it in there, except for that. I, I don't think people, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I didn't get any enjoyment out of watching it, and I don't really care for either one of them. I don't know, I don't think people watch YouTube to see people fight. Like, it was a genuine, I mean, it, 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 it would be like family vloggers showing like a fight. It's like uncomfortable, you know? And you could tell it wasn't like a funny ha-ha kind of like back and forth. Like, she was really upset, and he was really upset. And it just was like this weird ending to it. And then she storms off and he just kind of ends the podcast with no like, well, I guess I hope she comes back is what he says. Something like that, you know? So who knows what's going to happen with it next? I don't know. It's so cringy. I mean, he couldn't have just like cut it out because if he did, he'd have to be like, well, Trisha decided to not be in the last part of the podcast. She even asks him at like the beginning, she goes, why don't you ever cut anything out? Because she wants him to cut up some stuff that he's saying. And, um, He's like, I cut some things out. She's like, you never cut anything out of the podcast. So he couldn't cut it out, I guess. I don't know. Interesting. Um, I, you know, you would think knowing Trisha and how she stirs up drama that maybe she planned this before she went on the podcast. But I really don't believe that to be true. I really don't. It, the podcast is getting a lot of attention. How many views does it have on it so far? Let me see. Not just this one, but both of them. A one million views in two days. So people are liking these podcasts with her and Ethan. And um, I, I don't know. Do you guys think she'll be back? If they, if, if she's back, it'll be because they have some conversation behind the scenes, but then he'll be very careful with Trisha. And do we want to see a podcast where he's really careful with her? Because, you know, I mean, like that's his humor. If you guys like Ethan Klein's humor, it's because he says stuff that might offend her. You know what I mean? So anyway, I don't know. And then there's so much like, I'm starting to like, maybe I'm old and maybe I'm a prude, but some of the things that they were talking about on there, I just was like, I don't find this funny. Like, this is, like, gross humor that I don't find funny. I just don't. I don't know. You know, I think they're just... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am too old for this. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't think I'm too old for YouTube, but maybe I'm too old for that kind of humor. Who knows? Or maybe I never thought it was funny to begin with. I actually think that is it. I never really did think that kind of gross humor was funny. I, I, I've never really understood it. So, anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.